awesome right now for the wrestling world because there is so much talent in TNA. And to just now come out to sold out crowds above thousands right now is really awesome compared. But uh, he's somebody that I've listened to and gone to for advice just because for what he's done in the business and as a veteran, he's just, he's one of the best. How was it joining the company and then fully supporting you and get trust in putting the world title on yourself? Uh, and it was just cool to just have a moment like that, especially to share it the same night as my wife and I both winning the titles on the exact same night. Uh, it was just an awesome moment. And with that, that's what my sights are set on, is getting back to that TNA world title. And whether it be Nick Nemeth or maybe Joe Hendry by that time frame or uh, Frankie Kazarian. Nice, or... It's been a long day. Been at work today. And over here, we've got oh, like a okay. lot of brick buildings. So um, today, you won't have recognized me like an hour ago, like a chimney sweep, because we had to get like <laughs> the angle grinder, chop out all this old cement, and it's black. So I look like a chimney sweep. So on the way back, I called into a garage and I had people like pissing themselves laughing at me all day. So um, they still have chimney sweepers. It's a very rare trade, a okay. very rare gotcha. trade. Gotcha. So, um, yeah, but no, but to be honest, just watching their uh, sons again, like rewatching it. I haven't watched it for like a few years. Sons of Anarchy. Mm -hmm. So, and I've just got to the episode. Spoiler alert. If you haven't watched it, OP's just been killed. Oh, it's that's one that gets you at the heartstrings every time. That's the day I believe every man cried and woman because you cannot watch that scene without crying. Oh, I love even like if for that scene to happen, and if you go back and you watch the scene of Opie hitting the cop just so he can go to jail and protect Jax too because he knew, yeah, like that. Like you go back, you're like, oh wow, like you just look at the deep threads of certain things with the Easter eggs they put beforehand, and you're like, oh wow, okay. Yeah, no, that's heartbreaking. And like, you know, obviously Bobby and all that, but still like, even if you're on like TikTok, for example, and for some reason, like my timeline's always like Sons of Anarchy. And lately it's been showing you like a lot of interviews with uh, Kim Coates and they mm -hmm. spoke about uh, uh, Tig. And you know the scene where um, his um, daughter like gets killed? Yeah. He was talking about, by the way, we will, talk, we will talk about wrestling. Um, but... Um, <laughs> He he. They he said we had to. I had to put special handcuffs on because I think he he's got daughters. So when he was doing that part of the show, when he was filming it, he said I am. I couldn't help but imagine that was my daughter. And he said, and um, Kurt, Kurt, you know, who made the show, he said Kurt knew that. So they had to actually make him like special handcuffs because otherwise, he said I would have ripped my hands off filming that scene. So. I love it. It's, it's kind of crazy. It's it's crazy how like when you have to put yourself into like a moment like that, especially on television for a show, and like you have to kind of bring that realism into it and thought because if not, it's gonna not gonna come off authentic. It's the same yeah. in wrestling. True. Very very true. So. Well, exactly. I mean, that's a great segue because obviously the best wrestlers uh, portray an extension of themselves, mm -hmm. and so obviously with your run now in TNA, which I'm loving. Would you say that is you dialed up to 11? Yeah, it's very much me. And it's trying to get my my view across of who I am to the world. Because uh, who I am in the wrestling ring completely is opposite of what I'm, I'm like in real life. Right. Uh, so it's just, yeah. It's just fun to be able to go out there and have my own little therapy session. <laughs> That's why I call this podcast whenever people comes on. I'm like, it's not a podcast. It's a therapy session. We can just yeah. chill out, have a chat. <laughs> Yeah, it's very therapeutic. When I'm like after a match, like emotionally, I'm just like, all right, we got to get back on the even keel. And if it was a good match, like the majority of the time when it's a good match, you come back, all right, great, great, great. And then it's like that calm down, that adrenaline dump. And then you're sitting there afterwards and then you just start going over every detail in your head of like, oh, what, what could have been better? What could have been this? How would have my reaction have been to this? How was my facial expression here? And you just, and that's how we learn. How long does it take for that adrenaline to come down? Because... Like, obviously, I'm not a wrestler. Uh, but, for example, my son competes. He does Taekwondo. And he's only a kid. He's 10. He's coming 11 next week. But when he competes, he's got that adrenaline. And it takes a long time for him to, you know, like, calm down. Especially, like, if he's been fighting. So, like, for wrestlers in the ring, especially when you're performing in front of, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of people, like, watching you. How long does it actually take for you to bring that adrenaline down? Because I can't imagine it. 
Uh, it depends on the groove too. If like it's a full on weekend of travel, like, and you're going from show to show, it's, it's good. You just kind of stay on that high, you go to sleep, you get right back in wrestling mode all day. Uh, but like coming home and like decompressing a little bit and kind of like desensitizing myself for like socially from like big crowds is what I try to do. And I'm very much in tune of just being alone and in my own head and with my family. And maybe usually the normal is like two, three hours, I would say, but just a lot right. of the times, like that's what we're up till two, three in the morning, just talking on even like big pay-per-views, like even rebellion a few years ago when D and I won the title together, like we just sat in bed, ate a pizza afterwards and watched both of our matches back or Tita. Cause we were both so amped up still. Yeah. True enough. Uh, speaking of big shows, obviously, you just wrestle up Mount Glory and you're in this yes. big program, Josh Alexander. Now, um, obviously, you had a great match, came up a little short, but you know, it ain't yeah. finished yet. Yeah, you will get your revenge. But what's your thoughts on the current momentum TNA is riding at the minute? Because everything to me, watching it, it's like it's all pointing up. And obviously, your big part of the show now, Joe Hendry's over like Rover, you got Nick Nemeth as the champ. What's your thoughts on like the success of? Bound for Glory, but also just this wave that TNA's riding at the minute. Well, since last January, this full year has been just a big ride and a wave. The crowds are getting bigger. The TNA Plus app is just gaining more followers, which is what we're trying to get more eyes on for the product because not everybody has access to television, so TNA Plus is where we're trying to put everybody to. And I know everybody in Europe and UK is all on DAZN or on Fight. You could watch us as well. Uh, but the TNA Plus app is where we're trying to get eyes, and that's the number one goal we've had is – trying to get this product bigger and better. And it's kind of awesome right now for the wrestling world because there is so much talent in TNA and to just now come out to sold out crowds upon thousands right now is really awesome compared to when I started at TNA and it was still COVID time and no fans. And then they let in a couple hundred and then that build since then. And then the rebrand and it's been awesome. Yeah. By the way, that COVID era feels like a lifetime ago, but Thank what's God. Like? Let's keep it there. Yeah, yeah. What What's it like wrestling in front of new, oh, no fans? Because, like, I watched it on TV, you know, TNA, uh, WWE, AW. Yeah. It was different. And I know, like, some of the companies had the gimmicks to try and make it feel like it was full. But you in the ring, what was it like? And Very weird. How, yeah, I can't imagine what it's like. And what was more nerve wracking was I was debuting myself as a new character in a way to a, the world and an audience that's never seen me before and completely somewhat a little bit, not of a full three, well, not a full 180 from what I was doing in T, uh, WWE and mm. NXT as part of the Forgotten Sons. But like, I never really got to shine there on my own. So now here I have to come and prove myself in front of no one and then also have get over matches in front of no one. So where do I fill the time and gaps where normally you would react to a crowd or go to the crowd, feed off of the crowd? And it's just that's just another tool now that people during that era have if they got really good at it or they were bad at it. That's something you have to work on. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned Forgotten Sons. I remember speaking to Wesley a good few years ago now and honestly couldn't wish for a nicer guy. That guy's a saint. Oh, we were just talking before uh, before I actually was getting done at the gym and massage. We were chatting while I was driving. It was just good to catch up a little bit. And he was asking about the weekend and how it went with TVs. And we just, we talk every day. So it's just, he's my brother. Yeah. Now that guy's a saint. Uh, honestly, one of the nicest guys you could want to, well, obviously he's your best friend, he's your brother. But honestly, like I've done <laughs> well over like 200 interviews at this point now. And honestly, like a handful of people I can pick who I think is generally the nicest people. He's one of them, yourself included. Mr. Mayhem. <laughs> but, um... No, uh, I'm just happy he's where he's at right now as a coach in the PC, and it's just he's killing it, and he's doing well, and it's just he's in the right spot, too, just because he's one of the most talented wrestlers I've ever been in the ring with, and I know a lot of people say that. Quietly, nobody knows how good he truly was or is still, uh, and it's just it's good that he's in that position that he's in at the PC. I remember a story you told, and because um, obviously, you know, he's a Texas boy, and he he trained was it dory funk jr he trained under yeah yeah he was yeah. At, uh, with dory and uh i think he told like his father or his mother you're gonna you're gonna have to ask him afterwards and he he say i think it was his dad and his dad said if ever because they grew up like you know von eric territory and it was all von eric mm -hmm. fans and he said if your grandfather knew that you was trained under a funk he would roll over in his grave 
Yeah, no, it's great. Cause I know, uh, from what I know, Corey's dad trained at the gym Dory was lifting at still. And then that's how Corey got in, found his right. business. So here I am giving his origin story. But. <laughs> cool. But, um, no, so speaking of, um, NXT, yeah, obviously we've been seeing this, uh, talent exchange between, you know, yourselves and NXT. So, um, what's your thoughts on that? And is there a possibility you might be popping up in NXT? If it happens, it happens. I'm very happy with where I am and my spot right now in TNA. Uh, obviously, with the crossover, it'd be awesome because it gets more eyes on me and then TNA itself. But uh, I'm just happy with the direction right now and the stories that I'm going through and my my feud right now with Josh. I'm enjoying, but if something was to happen, who knows? Maybe Rumble time. And you've brought um, Eric Young seems to be on board as well. So um, yes. someone very similar style to yourself so how has it been working with him because obviously one of the og tna guys and i mean man if there's like a perfect tag team partner for yourself to go after them tag team titles he'd be one of the guys i would pick no yes uh obviously we had our match a few months back and uh we had our, our little uh, disagreement but uh we mutually respect each other it's working on the trust issues right now but uh he's somebody that i've listened to and gone to for advice just because for what he's done in the business and as a veteran, he's just, he's one of the best. Uh, he's so good at his craft and what he does. It's just, it's awesome to be just around him at all times to learn from him, asking questions that normally you wouldn't get an answer from most people out of honesty. Yeah, true enough. And um, I mean, you've probably been asked this question a million times, but I will ask you. So obviously you did eventually make that big jump to TNA and obviously since debut and you've done nothing but shine in that company to the point where they put the belt on you. How was it joining the company and them fully supporting you and giving, you know, having that much trust in putting the world title on yourself? It was great. Uh, and it just, it was Scott Demore, the team there with Robert, uh, Jimmy, Tommy, everybody behind the scenes, just having that moment to support me and put me into that role for that. Let me carry the ball for the month or two that I did. Uh, and it was just cool to just have a moment like that, especially to share it the same night as my wife and I both winning the titles on the exact same night or well, her defending her title. What was my what? No. Yeah, she won it. We both won it. I can't remember <laughs> off the top of my head. Uh, it feels forever ago, but it was uh, it was just an awesome moment. Awesome. So another quick question before I go then. So this could be the toughest question. We'll be putting you on the spot. All right. Steve Macklin, who's your Mount Rushmore professional wrestling? Oh, it is a tough one. It depends on the. Oof. It depends. Your it's like, are we going rest? Uh, Stone Cold, Brett, Sean. And I'd say Cena. Cena. Yeah. I I understand with Stone Cold because similar style the way you wrestle. Um, Brett and Sean, two of the best to do it in ring technical. Why Cena? Because um, he's I would length, say Cena's quite different to the other three. Just for the length that he's done as a top guy, just for the length and time that he was up on the top compared to everybody else is night and day. And for the run that he had and still is having, and this is going into his uh, retirement year, supposedly, uh, we'll see. I'm curious how that's going to go, and I'm actually in, intrigued to see how it's going to end. Uh, but, yeah, just look everywhere you go. When you say WWE, people say John Cena. Yeah, Stone enough. Cold, Hulk Hogan. You know what I mean? Like you hear those names, and those are the names that are always said. And I'm guessing with longevity, Cena had us the face WWE. Is that something you're aspiring to be yourself for TNA, being that guy that's going to be leading the charge for the next ten, say, fifteen years? Oh, uh, that if that, if I'm considered the face of TNA at some point, or even now, that that's awesome. I just try to do my best, uh, try to go out there and give the crowd what they want. I work my butt off and uh, try to deliver as much as I can. If you, people like me, they like me. If they hate me, they hate me. Either way, TNA is moving in the right direction. Yeah. And we're moving into a new year, but it's hard to believe, like, we're nearly in December already. But obviously, uh -huh. new year coming up, new resolutions. What's your goals for 2025 for t yourself and TNA? Well, we have Genesis in Dallas, which I'm very much looking forward to because it's a brand new pay-per-view, well, a rebirth of an old pay-per-view yeah. brought into January instead of Hard to Kill. Uh, so I'm curious uh, how that's going to end up going in Dallas, especially with them. We're doing live TV the following week, uh, from what I understand. And then uh, for me personally, is getting back to the world title. 
Uh, I have my, my, my feud right now with Josh. And when I'm done with that, that's what my sights are set on is getting back to that TNA world title. And whether it be Nick Nemeth or maybe Joe Hendry by that time frame or uh, Frankie Kazarian, or I don't know who else could be up there. Mike Santana, whoever it is at that time, that's what my sights are set on. (laughs) I I mean, speaking briefly on that, um, obviously the rebrand from impact back to TNA, you actually having the first match since the rebrand of TNA. How did that feel? That was a bit because I spoke to uh, Loki a couple of weeks ago, and obviously he's famously part of that first six man on the pay per view. So how was that for yourself to, to be actually the first match since the rebrand? It was awesome, and I even the when we were going into the rebrand and everything for Hard to Kill, it's funny because people are like, "Oh, how do you feel about being on the kickoff show?" I'm like, "It's awesome." Me and Rich Swan, who's a former world champion, I'm a former world champion. We're being featured as the first thing you see out the curtain and out the gate and we get to set the tone. I was like, please give me that challenge. So mm-hmm. it was a really good challenge and it was a lot of fun. Awesome. Well, Steve, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Uh, next time we need to talk some more Suns, man. We, we only scratch the surface with Suns. But, uh, I know. No, great thing. I hope you have a good day. And uh, yeah, uh, everyone who's watching, yeah, tune, uh, sign up to Impact uh, TNA Plus. And um, yeah, please. What ha- Simon? Simon? How much Simon is that? Now. Tell us, Simon. So in the states, it's nine dollars ninety nine. Um, Thank you, nine ninety nine. Yeah, and in the UK, I think it's nine pound ninety nine. However, there's tons of deals on at the moment. We have got a deal. We had a deal yes. for the World Championship deal where you got like a massive eighty percent discount. And at the moment, I believe we're doing a free month as well, so people can come and get a taster for a free month. There we go. There's your answer. That I- Everyone, yeah, please do uh, subscribe to TNA Plus and yeah, free months trial, so go for it. So yeah, Steve, thanks very much, mate, and yeah, hopefully we'll do this again soon. Thanks, James.